Well, good day, everyone, and welcome back to the channel. Uh, today, I want to talk about adding nutrients to the soil um, and to the plants themselves. So, I what's brought this about is I've got one tomato that's showing signs of blossom end rot, which is a calcium deficiency. It's um, it's a calcium deficiency and it can be caused by inconsistent watering which means the calcium is not moving freely through the plant. So I've got to fix that up. So while I'm doing that, I will talk to you about fixing up uh, nutrients, fixing up the micronutrients in the soil. So off we go. All right, to start with, I use a dynamic lifter. Now, this is an organic blend. You can see it's allowed in Australia as an organic additive. Uh, it contains chicken manure, seaweed, blood and bone, and fish meal. Uh, so that's the basics of it. Um, I plant that, I bury that in the soil. You can also use it to top dress as a fertilizer. Okay, next up we have blood and bone. Now that uh, I do in the soil, if I've got an established garden, I will top dress with it um, at the start of the growing season but I won't put it around new plants because it can be a bit hot for them. Again, this is a natural one. I try to use all organics. Next up, we have some phosphorus. Uh, that is uh, rock phosphorus that's in a pelletized form. So it's been ground down and then it's been pelletized. And that's great for your root growth and that sort of thing. Next up, rock mineral, minerals. Now this is all sorts of pelletized rock minerals. You can see there, there's a different mix of stuff. Uh, now it's in a pelletized form, so it's more readily accessible. That will help with calcium deficiencies, but it's got a three month slow release. So it's not gonna help the plants at the moment. Next up, we have Again, some rock minerals, but this is a ground rock mineral. Um, this is very, very slow release. This is the stuff you put in, and it'll help you out next year, but it's not gonna help you out this year. Okay, I use manures in the garden. At the moment, they're bought in manures, and they are composted manures, so they're not too hot for the plants. Uh, we don't want anything that's gonna be too hot, and it's gonna burn them off. So, manures are a definite must in, in my garden. Next up, the Epsom salt. You've seen that before. I use it to add magnesium to the soil. Uh, and we're moving around to the stuff that is more watering. So the Epsom salt that I use to water in. We have Charlie Carp. This is an Australian product. Uh, we have a carp problem in some of our river systems. But I use the carp to make a fertilizer. So this one's got the carp and it's got some seaweed added to it. So it's a good sort of nitrogen fertilizer and it adds some more trace minerals. Sea salt. Okay, this one is basically uh, compo composted seaweed um, that's been mulch down to a liquid form. So, wonderful stuff, adds lots of nutrients. It will not add uh, nitrogen, potassium, and phosphorus in large amounts. So it's not really a feed, it's more for supplemental micronutrients. All right, next we're moving on to the calcium deficiency that I've got. So, it may seem weird, but skim milk powder. Yeah, you know, any good baker's got this stuff sitting in the cupboard because I add it to dough all the time. So I just mix it up. A couple of liters of water, uh, four pints or two quarts for the Americans, and two tablespoons of milk powder. And I just use it as a foliar application. So I'm just gonna spray it on the leaves, but I'm gonna do it at the end of the day. As you saw a second ago, it's still pretty bright out and I don't want the plants getting burnt by getting water on them. So I'm gonna use it as a follower application just at the end of the day when the sun's going down and the plant will take it up through the leaves and that will help to solve 
any calcium deficiencies because it's right up in that growing zone. So that's the way you try and work your way around blossom end rot. You know, it's a bit of a tricky one to get around. Ideally, you want to solve it before it starts. But with a new garden like I've got, it's very hard to know what's going to happen as you go through the growing season. So, you know, this is the way to get around it. And blossom end rot can happen in tomatoes, pumpkins, anything in the cubert family. Uh, and again, it's because they're calcium. Thank you very much, everyone, for tuning in. Um, please hit the like, hit the subscribe, hit that little bell notification so you know when I've got further videos coming out in Shed Wars or any of the other ones I do. Again, thank you very much for watching and bye for now.